Today's video is all about Airflow 3.0, a major new release that brings big improvements to how we build, manage and scale data pipelines. I'll walk you through the most important changes, show you what's new under the hood and break down what this means if you're using Airflow in production or planning to. Whether you're already deep into Airflow or just getting started, this version introduces some powerful new concepts that are absolutely worth knowing. I also want to thank Astronomer for sponsoring this video. They're the team behind Astro, a managed airflow platform that helps you deploy and operate airflow more easily across any environment. If you want to learn more, I linked my video on Astro in the top right corner. All right, let's get into it. A quick airflow refresher. Apache Airflow is a platform to programmatically author, schedule and monitor workflows. It's been around since 2014 and it's grown into the de facto standard for orchestration of data pipelines, especially in the modern data stack. Now with version 3.0, it's not just an update, it's a fundamental evolution in how Airflow works. New architecture. Let's start with what I think is the most important change in Airflow 3.0. The architecture has been completely redesigned. So what was the problem? In Airflow 2.x and earlier, the architecture looked like this. All components, the scheduler, web server, worker, triggerer, DAG file processor talk directly to the metadata database. That setup came with a lot of limitations, especially when deploying Airflow in more complex environments. And here's where things often got difficult, particularly if you were running Airflow in the cloud or working with private and secure networks. When you deployed Airflow in the cloud, for example, on Astronomer's Astro, it worked well until your data or tasks needed to run inside a private VPC or on-prem environment. In those cases, workers needed access to the metadata database, which wasn't always possible or secure. Right? Many corporations have multi-layered internal networks, and in those setups, you often can't directly reach the internet or cloud services. They're also extremely strict about opening ports or allowing outbound routes. So setting up communication between cloud-based airflow and internal systems was tough. If you're working with sensitive environments like financial systems or healthcare data, there was no clean way to execute tasks locally while keeping the rest of airflow in the cloud. So yeah, managing airflow at scale or across environments was hard. Airflow 3.0 solves this by introducing a new central API server. Here's how the architecture works now. The scheduler and UI still talk directly to the metadata database. But workers, DAG processors and triggers no longer need that direct access. Instead, they communicate with the API server, which acts as the single point of contact. The API server then handles all interactions with the database behind the scenes. This changes a lot, especially when it comes to network complexity. Now with the API server in place, you can take a different approach because communication happens through an API layer. You can run your workers inside a private network and set up a proxy to forward the necessary HTTP traffic to the API server. This is a much more acceptable pattern in secure environments. Proxies are common. This means tasks no longer need database access, which makes it much easier to connect cloud-based airflow with private infrastructure. Event-driven scheduling is finally native. One of the most exciting new features in Airflow 3.0 is the event-driven scheduling. Here's why this is such a big deal. Until now, triggering Airflow DAX based on external events was not great. Let's say you wanted to trigger a pipeline when a file lands in an S3 bucket, or when a message is published to Kafka, or when a downstream system finishes processing data. Your only real option was to pull that system using a sensor that runs every X minutes and checks has something happened yet. This creates a bunch of problems. It's inefficient. Sensors just sit there wasting resources. It delays the reactions. You only respond after the next poll cycle. It adds complexity, especially when polling secure or rate limited systems. 
and it eats up worker loads, which can bottleneck your whole DAC queue. In Airflow 3.0, it's true event-driven workflows. With Airflow 3.0, you can finally go full event-driven using a new concept called Asset Watchers. Instead of polling, watchers subscribe to the event source, like S3 events, Kafka topics, or SQS queues on AWS. When a new message or event is detected, the watchers asynchronously triggers the DAC. No wasted resources, no polling loops, no messy workarounds. It works using Airflow's triggerer system, so the whole thing is event-based and non-blocking. This kind of functionality brings Airflow closer to modern event-driven architecture and makes it way more powerful in real-time data workflows. From tasks to assets, the new asset syntax. One of the biggest conceptual shifts in Airflow 3.0 is how we define pipelines. Up to now, we've used the task flow API, defining tasks as Python functions, linking them together with decorators or XCOMs. Now with Airflow 3.0, we move to an asset-based syntax. Here's the idea. Instead of focusing on how tasks are executed, you focus on what your pipeline produces. Assets could be tables, reports, files, or dashboards. Any logically grouped piece of output. Let me show you a quick example to make this clear. In the task flow version, we define a DAG using the add DAG decorator. Inside it, we have three separate add task functions. One to extract order data, one to transform it, and one to load the result. At the bottom, we explicitly wire the tasks together by calling them in sequence. This is still clean, but we're managing more of the wiring and structure ourselves. In the asset version, there is no DAG definition at all. Each step is just a standalone add asset function that describes what it produces and Airflow infers the order based on the function arguments. The extract function produces order underscore data. The transform function consumes that and returns order underscore summary. The load function consumes order summary and prints the final result. There is less boilerplate. We also organize the assets using a group, which helps structure things in the UI later. Now, why is this great? You write less code and it's easier to follow. Right? DAGs become more declarative. You describe what assets exist and how they depend on each other. Dependencies are handled automatically based on function inputs. You can group, version, and reference assets across pipelines. It's easier to reason about what your pipeline produces, not just how it runs. This shift makes Airflow from just being a task scheduler to becoming a more data product oriented tool where the outputs take basically the center of the stage. Here's another awesome concept in Airflow 3.0, DAG bundles. Until now, all your DAGs typically lived in a single folder, often mounted directly into the Airflow environment. Every time a DAG file was touched, Airflow would re-parse the whole folder it was messy, slow, and could easily break things across the board. Not ideal for teams or for any sort of controlled deployment. With Airflow 3.0, we get a better way to manage this. A bundle is a structured collection of DAGs, assets, and any support files you need. But what makes this really powerful is that bundles can come from multiple sources. The local file system, Git repositories, or object storages like S3 or Azure Blob. You can define, refresh, intervals, sync settings, and even load DAGs from different sources into a single Airflow instance. And here's where it gets interesting from a team workflow perspective. When your DAGs live in a Git repo and are bundled this way, you can now build real version control pipelines. You can branch, test, and merge DAG changes like you do with any application code. It becomes much easier to review changes, collaborate, and automate deployments through CICD pipelines. So instead of pushing your code into a folder and hoping for the best, you can now treat your DAGs like a first-class software. DAG versioning. It's finally here. Until now, DAGs in Airflow have always been treated as a single, ever-changing object. When you changed your DAG code, those changes apply to everything including the past. Let's say you have a DAG with three tasks, extract, transform, and load. Now you run that DAG a few times, all good. 
but later you decide to simplify and delete the transform task from your DAG file. What happens in Airflow2.x? You go to the UI and look at an old DAG run. And boom, the transform is gone from the whole graph. Even though the task did run at the time, there is no trace of it anymore. It becomes basically impossible to reproduce what happened. Debug old runs, audit pipeline changes. That's a huge problem, especially in production or regulated environments. Airflow 3.0 solves this with a proper DAG versioning. Each time your DAG code changes, Airflow stores a new version of that DAG. In the UI, you can actually select previous DAG versions and see the exact DAG structure from that point in time. So if a task existed in version 2 but was deleted in version 3, you'll still see it when inspecting runs from version 2. It's all preserved, clearly versioned and auditable. You can even choose which version to run for new backfills or reruns if you're using a Git-based DAG bundle. Then we have the UI overhaul. A quick shout out to the new UI. Airflow 3.0 gets a full React-based redesign. The new homepage gives you instant visibility into DAG health, failed runs, task duration and asset activity. It's cleaner, more responsive and more helpful out of the box. Failed task logs right there in the overview. Asset relationships visualized in a graph. Version dropdown for DAX, just click and go. It's not just pretty, it's way more usable. Also, backfilling has an improved UX and reliability. If you've ever had to backfill a bunch of historical DAG runs, you know the pain. In Airflow 2.x, this was CLI only and backfills ran as separate schedulers, making them fragile and hard to monitor. Now with 3.0, you can trigger backfills via API or UI, monitor progress in real time, see backfilled runs clearly marked in the UI, use consistent scheduling logic across backfill and live runs. This is a huge quality of life improvement for data engineers. All right, so if you want to get started with Airflow 3.0, then my recommendation is go to astronomer.io and on the site, click here, get started for free. And you can get here $300 in credits and 14 days of free use, basically. The setup is super simple and it's very quick. It takes two, three minutes. And what you're going to have is you're going to have your own workspace where you have an overview dashboard here where you see all the DAG runs you can see all the tasks you can get an overview of the past seven days or 30 minutes and also you can look at your deployments it takes around a minute to create yourself a deployment i used here for aws where you can see then your tasks and your DAGs that have run and you see the worker cpu you see the worker memory and so on you also can look at the each individual DAG and explore the DAG's process and which are failing, which are successful. And from here, you can jump either here directly into your DAG and can look at the Airflow UI and can explore the DAG and what has happened. Or you can also go directly here from the deployments, open Airflow and also come to the overview within Airflow 3.0 where you can then explore the DAX, the assets, and look more into the whole system. Again, Astronomer, super cool. It's very easy to set up. It's super simple to develop because you can develop on your machine and then you just do an Astro deploy in the command line and it automatically is going to push everything into your deployment here in the cloud. So very, very cool. Give it a try. The link is in the description. If you like this deep dive, please hit the like button below, maybe share it with someone on your team. And let me know in the comments, which Airflow 3.0 feature are you most excited about? See you in the next one. Bye.